Matty Holland, good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Not too bad. Now, we were hoping to maybe get talking to you this morning with uh, after getting maybe a positive result last night. It wasn't uh, to be. You were on commentary duty. Yeah, I, I mean, started really well as well. I think we, you know, we we um, we pressed, we passed. I like the shape of the team. I've, I've long been saying I wanted us to play a back three because I think it suits the players that we've got. Um, I thought it, it. we defended in good numbers. We attacked in good numbers. And we started the game really brightly. Um, obviously scored a wonderful goal as well. I thought Alan Brown in particular was was very good. Um, heavily, heavily involved in the goal itself, winning the ball back and the edge of the box, playing it out wide and getting himself into an area where he can score goals. Important when you're a number 10. So the start to the game, I thought, was was great. Um, took a bit of a backward step after that. And un unfortunately, the quality of Serbia told in the end. You know, Mitrovic coming off the bench, he, 36 international goals and he sat on the bench. You know, it's it's um, it's something we can only dream of, really, to, to have that luxury sat on the bench. And and Dusan Tadic, I thought, was, was excellent as well and caused us problems all night with his movement, the way he, he didn't stay out wide. He kept getting into the number 10 position and looking to create. So ultimately, undone by a bit of quality, really. Were you surprised to see Stephen Kenny go with that lineup, considering the maybe the positions of the back four? Obviously, a lot had been made of the, the whole Shami Coleman authority situation. Maybe the, the whole thing, part two, went a bit more successful, I think. Yeah, I was a bit surprised, simply because he's, he's always played a back four. And um, he hasn't had a lot of time to, to work on playing a back three. So I, I was a little bit surprised in that. I guess he had some big calls to make as well. And, you know, Shane Duffy um, or Dara O'Shea, he went for O'Shea, which was a big call. thought, you know, he, he played well as well. So um, in midfield, there was Jason Malumbi coming in and, and at the expense of, well, I mean, probably Jeff Hendrick. So he went for an inexperienced on the whole lineup. Obviously, he had Seamus Coleman in there, who's who's been around it a long time and, and I thought he was excellent again actually last night he's played in that position for Everton so it's not a problem for him um, so yeah he made some he made some big calls and and changing the system as well I thought was a was a big call it was bold ultimately unfortunately it didn't quite get the result we I, certainly our first half an hour merited uh, I was very impressed with I'm not sure about you with Josh Cullen last night Um I thought he was very dynamic in terms of getting on the ball. Uh, it's maybe been a while since we've seen maybe a central midfielder pressing so hard to get on the ball. How did you feel he done last night? He, he for me, was actually Ireland's best player. Yeah, I, I thought he was terrific. I was um, in commentary sort of raving about him, really. How he wanted to get on the ball. Um, he was always showing, always available, always actually you know looking to be progressive with his passing as well. It wasn't someone who just got on the ball and played it back to his centre halves and then moved again and went back to his centre halves. He looked to get on the half turn. He looked to play forward. His pressing was excellent. You know, he was closing down quickly in midfield. What I would say is, is not just him, but the whole team. I felt tired in the second half. Put a lot into the game, um, but absolutely done himself no harm. I thought he was. I thought he was our best player. Were you surprised to see Stephen Kenny make the change in taking Jason Malumbi off for Jeff Hendrick when he did? Well, I thought I thought Jason had done okay in the game, um, but I, I did feel as though it, it needed freshening up at that stage. You just felt that the legs were tiring. Um, they've done a lot of work defensively, um, having to get back into shape and chasing in midfield. So I, I could understand him making the change. Um, you know, I think when we saw his initial selection. It, it, he could easily, you know, it was quite an inexperienced team that he selected. He could easily have gone for a bit of inexperience off the bench as well, you know, Jason Knight or someone. It, so he could have gone with the freshness of, of Jason. But I mean, look, I, I, I felt at that time it needed a little bit of freshening up because the lads had got through a lot of work. Yeah, it certainly did feel last night like a slight, I don't know if changing of the guard is the right word. Obviously, it would have been the, the option to play maybe Robbie Brady and, and Shane Long from the start. In fairness to Stephen, he stuck to his guns. He went with the youth. Um, hopefully, they're going to be the ones that get him through the next four to six years. Are nights like last night going to stand to those lads in the future? Yeah, I, I hope so. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it felt like, as you quite rightly say, a bit of a change because um, there's a number of players sort of over the last five or six years who we think we, or we should think that we'll be getting to their peak now. Um, and, and 
hasn't quite happened for whatever reason. And there's some of the younger lads who, who he knows very well coming through the under 21s and he, he understands what they're all about. And he's, he's obviously given them a chance now. And um, I, I thought there was some real positives in, in some of the performances from the, from the younger players. So <laughs> the only thing I'd say is we, we've got to start getting results at some point, you know, it's, it's all very well. us keep saying, yeah, it's great. You know, we played quite well, positives. We, the young lads came through. But at some point, to validate what he's trying to do, even the players, they need it as well for their own confidence, just to get a result that will kickstart their campaign and kickstart their 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 um, belief in, in what Stephen's asking them to do. So that's the only thing i say. Although I was reading this morning, Michael O'Neill um, won one of his first 18 games for, for Northern Ireland. In Ireland, yeah. Which is, you know, when you look back, it, he was sort of the best thing that ever happened to them. So... Yeah. Hopefully, you know, if if um, if that's the case, then then Stephen rides this through and and um, and and turns it around. Yeah, I suppose it will all look different in a few days. I don't think anyone has had this the start that Stephen has had out of the job. Three points against Luxembourg, you know, suddenly things may start to look up. He's got the monkey off his back in terms of the two goals last night. And um, in terms of goals and, and maybe the centre forward position, Matt, how did you feel Aaron Connolly done last night? Um, I thought it was a mixed performance from him. I thought Callum of the two was probably more of a threat. Um, I, I, I have sympathy with Aaron though. I mean, he has been out quite a while and, um, you know, fitness wise, he did look a bit undercooked coming into it. Um, so I, I thought of the two, I thought Callum was, was probably the better of the two strikers last night. Uh, I thought we did carry a threat going forward though. You know, Alan Brown, I thought was always looking to get into the box and get himself into goal scoring positions Matt Dott is, is better as a wing back than he is a full back and gets himself, you know, he got himself into some good crossing areas. Um, Ender Stevens got forward well. So I felt like we were getting bodies into, into areas where we could, we could challenge the opposition goal. So I thought that was better in that respect. Aaron just needs games. You know, he's, he's clearly a talented player. He's, he's got ability to find space. He's quick. He looks to take people on and get you up the pitch. He was threatening him behind quite a lot as well. Um, but he just needs games, he just needs fitness to get himself up to speed. In terms of Alan Brown, have himself, Cullen and Malumbi now cemented themselves for the next couple of games, or at least the Luxembourg game? Is Knight him with a chance of coming in, or I don't think he'd go back to Brady or Hendrick against Luxembourg anyway? No, I don't either. I think I think Josh Cullen and, and Alan Brown absolutely definitely play. I think that those two, you know, did great and, and deserve to start against Luxembourg. Um, whether he decides just to freshen it up a little bit, because these games are coming... You know, mm. quite quickly as well. This these international breaks, sort of three games in six, seven days. It's it's a really tight schedule. So, you know, even last night you saw Serbia take off Dusan Tadic with 20 minutes to go, feeling like the job was done, but protecting him because they play Portugal mm. at, um, at the weekend. So, I don't know whether he might just decide to tweak it slightly and, and bring in some extra fresh legs in the middle of the pitch. That might be the case, but but Josh Cullen and Alan Brown have to play, I'm sure. So I suppose looking ahead to Saturday, you'd have to fancy to get the three points, man. Well, he's like you say, he's got his goals now. Yeah. He's got a couple of goals um, in that game last night. I thought we looked a threat going forward. There, there were positives to take from it. I yeah. don't want to be one of those that keeps saying, you know, we, 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 we've got positives to take from a defeat because ultimately it's about winning. Um, now, he needs the, now he needs a result to, to really validate what he's doing. So, yeah, three points. Get us going, um, and then, and then then look forward to the next ones. Just before you go, is there is there a case or is there anything in football, Matt, where there's maybe like a free ride from Stephen Kenny in this campaign due to the circumstances around maybe players been injured and stuff like that, or does the pressure really start to mount after maybe God forbid things didn't go right against Luxembourg, or is he in a situation now where people are going to give him the full campaign and maybe judge him on the next one? Um, I think there's always pressure. I, I, I don't think there's a, no any such thing as a, a free ride. I think you go into every game having to win it. And um, ultimately, I think we, we at the start of this campaign, we felt we were probably fighting with Serbia for second place. So that means we have to beat Azerbaijan and Luxembourg home and away. Simple as that. And, and I think those those four results are, are, have to be a given. And, and if we don't, then, you know, I think the pressure will ramp up. So, no, there's no free ride. I think... I think um, I know he's had problems. I know he's had the COVID issues. I know he's had the injury problems. I know he's had cut some of his coaching staff, you know, leave. And, and it's been a difficult, really difficult year for him in charge. But um, no, I think I, I think the pressure's on to get a result and he, and he has to win both of those, those games home and away.
Uh, we've got the goals. Hopefully, the, the next time we're chatting to you, we've got the, the points, Matt. Thanks very much for giving up your time this morning, and uh, we'll chat to you again. Absolutely. Pleasure. Yeah, keep safe Thanks. and well. Thank you, Matt. EJmenswear.com. Shop Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Farah. EJmenswear.com. Shop Raz Varen, Ted Baker, Gaunt. EJmenswear.com. Shop Lion Scott, G Star, Super Dry. Shop top brands. Shop Irish owned. Shop EJmenswear.com.